now Colin Cowherd talking trending topics from the world of sports. If you look at who works in the NFL, Drew Brees, Purdue, Big Ben, Aaron Rodgers Junior College, it's the kids that are humbled in college that play with average players and have to elevate them. Philip Rivers. Where's LeBron going to go? Los, Los Angeles. Clippers or Lakers? Lakers. Clippers brand isn't big enough for him. Serena Williams has won 15 Grand Slams for the last time Tiger won his last major. Serena Williams is the most underrated athlete of my Make life. Great point, yeah. Maybe the most dominant athlete of her generation. Plus, LeVar Ball. Does he help or hurt his sons? Parenting's hard. He got a bunch of scholarship, three boys to UCLA, which is the most applied to university in the world. Hard for me to criticize. Lonzo Ball's a good kid. It's all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Today's guest is fan favorite sports broadcaster, Colin Cowherd. Colin hosts The Herd with Colin Cowherd weekdays on FS1 and Fox Sports Radio Network. And speak for yourself alongside Jason Whitlock, also on FS1. He's also a contributor to Fox NFL kickoff during the football season. We're going to talk some current topics from the sports world, as well as Colin, Colin's renowned broadcasting career. First things first, March Madness, who are you picking? Villanova's the best team I've seen. Duke's the most talented. Um, so I'd probably go, I, something happened a few years ago in the one and done culture. Kentucky moved toward it, Villanova moved away from it, and they both succeeded. Villanova said, no, we, we're not going to get that kind of kid. We can't attract him anyway, so we're going to get three-star guys and keep him in school. And did you notice when one and done started, as everybody was paying attention to the rise of Kentucky, that Gonzaga and Villanova have won as many or more games in the last three years. They went the opposite way. Which is, a great, which is a great thing about sports. There's more than one way to win. So are you picking Villanova? Villanova is the best passing college basketball team I have seen in years. It's more of even now in the, in this, in the whole It used picture. to be a four-star hotel yeah. now. Now it's a two-star hotel. All the rooms are pretty average, <laughs> you know? Athletes better at the smaller schools, too? Uh, more transferring. Uh, the best players are one and done. College basketball is an airport. You land, and you're looking for the next flight. You, you want to get out. Nobody wants to hang out in the airport hotel. So the players come in, and the good ones, they want to get out to the NBA. So nobody stays. It's so it's just this fluid sport where the best players are gone. Does college basketball have a Belichick? Coach K's the best coach. Uh, Jay Wright's really good at Villanova, really smart. And he's, and he's, you know, he's gotten better. You know, he's not one of these guys. You know, Bobby Knight, I thought, hit a wall, and he kind of started believing the press. Some rigidity, didn't recruit as well. Guys hit walls. Jay Wright is better every year. Roy Williams has done that. You know, Roy's gotten better. Roy's a listener. He hasn't gotten stagnant. The Naismith Player of the Year, is it uh, Trey Young? No. Uh, Jalen Brunson, the kid at Villanova, I like. Trey Young's interesting. Uh, he'll be a good pro? He'll be okay. You know, you know we always do this. Always the next step. Steph Curry is the most important basketball player in the world, not LeBron. Okay, Steph Curry looks, eight-year-olds think, oh, I can be Steph Curry. My son thinks he can be Steph Curry. My son never looked at Shaq and thought, I'm going to be seven foot three. Steph Curry changed the game. No Steph Curry, you don't have a dynasty. The three-point shot's not as big. Le LeBron's a freight train. LeBron's a transformational talent. Steph Curry changed shoes, changed the game, changed shots, changed three-pointer, um, changed the franchise. I think Steph Curry is the most important basketball player globally of my lifetime. We literally, Michael Jordan was great. He didn't change the game. Kareem created a shot that was never duplicated. Steph's the opposite. He's created a shot that everybody's trying to do. There are people who will say Kevin Durant is better on the Warriors than he is. Steph Curry eliminated the centers. You and I grew up with centers. Yeah. Steph Curry eliminated centers. You can't be on the floor of a pro basketball game if you can't shoot. It used to be under, you could have, there were so many players we grew up, Rodman, Ben Wallace. It didn't matter if, it didn't matter if players, there were all sorts of players. You had role players. You had a physical, you know, the, look at the Knicks. Anthony Mason couldn't shoot. I mean, uh, Charles Oakley couldn't shoot. 
Because of Steph Curry, if you can't shoot, you can't play professional basketball. What do you make of the Houston Rockets? Good. Mike D'Antoni worries me. He's Chip Kelly. It's a system. It's all off offense. It's right? all offense. It's a system. And during a regular season when you don't have time to prepare. But when you took Chip Kelly in a bowl game, and Nick Saban or Urban Meyer have a month to prepare, and you take Mike D'Antoni and I play him seven times in two weeks, no more tricks. I'm equally rested. So D'Antoni to me is Chip Kelly, built for the regular season. Uh, I love watching Chip Kelly's football teams and Mike D'Antoni's basketball teams. I don't think they're built for championships. Harden the best player? He's the best offensive player. He's the best offensive player. He's, you know, generally there's a prototype. Kobe was like Michael Light, right? I've never seen anything like Harden. He's a lefty. He's not fast. He's herky-jerky. How does he get to the basket? Uh, he's got an awkward style. Um, again, lefty. He's like a left-handed boxer. Nobody's quite ready for the angles. He's a great shooter. Initiates contact. And Mike D'Antoni's system, which, by the way, never forget Mike D'Antoni's system. Jeremy Lin took over basketball for a month. It's good for it. Chris Duhon, Jeremy Lin. Steve Nash was the MVP. So some of it's Harden, a lot of it. Some of it's Mike D'Antoni's system, which elevates all point guards. Even Chris Paul? Yeah, I love Chris Paul, but he shouldn't be winning 22 straight games. <laughs> I mean, I love him, but, you know, he's, he's, he's my favorite point guard because I think he plays old school, high intellect, defense, gritty, tough, smart, can play well with others. By the way, you know, how's Blake Griffin's career without Chris Paul? Not the same career. What happened to him with the Clippers? I'm a Clipper fan, and I don't know. Bad chemistry. You know, top down. Dots. I've always thought it's an odd organization. Doesn't quite. There's not a symmetry within the organization. It's Steve Ballmer, sort of a, an, you know, it's, he's a brilliant, sort of eccentric, uh, loud, volume owner. And then who? Lawrence Frank running it. And then Doc Rivers wants to be a GM. He's more of a coach. Then there was Chris Paul. Blake Griffin was a limited player, couldn't shoot. It, well, he it, can shoot, Blake Griffin. A little bit. And, you know, get him outside of 18 feet, I'm, I don't trust him. I, I just never thought it worked. I didn't, I didn't feel everybody was aligned in the same place. Where's LeBron going to go? Los, Los Angeles. Clippers or Lakers? Lakers. Clippers' brand isn't big enough for him. I think Lonzo's good. Brandon Ingram's potentially very good. Kyle Kuzma's very good. He'll move Paul George out to Los Angeles, and they'll be very, very good. How about the rumors of him going to Philadelphia? Philadelphia's got better young players than the Lakers, but he doesn't own two houses there, and they don't make a lot of movies there. So I think this is just a better place to be. Plus, the NBA is a winter league. It's just easier to live in L.A. It's 70 degrees in January. He is a friend of Steve Ballmer's, though. Is he? And Ballmer has a lot of money. And Well, you know, LeBron's buddies all live out here. Maverick Carter, you know Maverick. All these guys live out here. That's some of it. The Herd with Colin Cowherd is Fox Sports' number one highest rated studio program. Why does that brand work, do you think? Can you self-reflect? The, the mission was very simple. Fox had a big Super Bowls, World Series, NASCAR, big games, big names, Aikman, Bradshaw, Buck, Long, Strahan. And then my takeaway was we had big games, we had big names, let's do big topics. So we just do opinion. You know, ESPN is doing some sports center. They're doing some journalism. They're doing some debate, which is sort of resented by the journalists and the highlight people. They can't quite find their way. We're very simple. We come on every day, and we just give you strong opinions on the biggest topics. Brady, LeBron, Harden, NBA, Nick Saban. Um, in a very complex world, simplicity works. You know, the, there are so many choices. They're, they are anxiety. Why did you leave ESPN? Uh, ten great years. Didn't like my last one. I thought the company was getting political. I didn't trust the leadership. Um, I, I didn't know what we were becoming, and I wanted something new. Ten year, Pat Riley once said, ten years of coaching, move on. They get tired of your voice. When you were a kid, who was the sports broadcaster you idolized? Well, Vin Scully, I heard him on radio at seven years old. I was in Washington State, and I had this transistor radio in a bathroom. I remember where I was. I had to plug it in in a bathroom, Washington State on the coast, and I had to sit in a spot by our bathroom to hear Vin Scully. And even at seven, eight years old, I knew he was different, told stories. And so I used to listen. He'd come KFI. He'd come up the coast, and I'd listen to KNBR and Dick Enberg with the Angels and the San Francisco Giants guys. So I wanted to be a baseball announcer. There was no talk radio. So newspapers. And radio. There were guys like you I listened to. Um, 
And I just, just knew. Um, I was a little bit of a, uh, I wasn't lonely, but I was alone. Alcoholic father, um, British proper mother, uh, left often by myself. And I loved radio. And I talked to myself. I do today. Um, I liked writing. I liked talking. I liked storytelling. I used to fill out baseball cards, the Reds and the Dodgers. I mean, I'd go, I mean, literally, it was just... Uh, Lopes and Russell and Garvey and Jaeger and Joe Ferguson, all the way down to, you know, Don Sutton, Messersmith, Doug Rao, and I'd do, you know, the Reds, and I'd play wiffle ball games in the yard, and I'd call them. Yeah, and I'd I would play call, games to myself. Yeah, and I would call the games. And, you know, it sounds like such a sad little life, but I, I wasn't lonely. I was alone. There's a big difference. We lost Dick Enberg. The most gracious hey, broadcaster, perhaps, of my life. Also, the best specialist. I mean, you could do a lot of things. Tennis, golf, yeah. baseball. Gracious, wonderful guy. You know, he passed away with a suitcase at his front door. He was ready to do another assignment. They found him with a suitcase and a suit on. And I talked to a friend last night, Dean Spanos, owns this L.A. Uh, Chargers. And the Spanos said he came home, heard the news, and Dick Enberg had sent him a Christmas card, and it was the first one he opened, and he had just passed away. NFL draft, what do you make about all these quarterbacks? It'll be, you know, half will be good, half won't. Sam Darnold at USC, regular people, great family, tough, thick, smart, works hard, had a great pro day this week. It started raining halfway through, which he wanted. Um, you know, it's really funny, Larry, the way it works. I wrote this in a, in a book one time, my first book. You think there'd be a linear progress. High school quarterback, go to Alabama, USC, NFL. Doesn't work that way. If you look at who works in the NFL, Drew Brees, Purdue, Big Ben, Aaron Rodgers Junior College, it's the kids that are humbled in college that play with average players and have to elevate them. Phillip Rivers, Eli Manning at Ole Miss. Do you know USC's never had a quarterback in the Super Bowl? Go look around the NFL, LSU, USC, Ohio State, Florida. Okay, Brady, Michigan, but he struggled to start, had a chip on his shoulder. Didn't start. Didn't start. Sam Darnold is very unique because he came to USC and he was their second, third best quarterback. Had to work his way up. He was a three-star recruit, middle-class family. Didn't go to a top program. So he's got, he's got all the things necessary to be successful in the NFL, which is he was doubted, he wasn't pampered, and he's been through some turmoil at USC. He lost his coach midway. What do you make of Josh Rosen? Not sure if he's durable. Smart and great arm. Great arm, smart. Durability, escapability worries me. I think he's a, I think he's got a little Matt Ryan, but I'm not sure he's as durable. How about the running back? Saquon Barkley, more Reggie Bush than Ezekiel Elliott. Three games he was held under three yards of carry. If you, if you start digging, he lost more yards than any running back in college football last year. Um, he is not a 27 carry a game kid. He's oh. not. He's a 16 carry a game guy. Uh, I like him a lot. He reminds me of Reggie Bush. He can do special teams, but he is not Jim Brown. He is not Earl Campbell. He's not Adrian Peterson. He is not that type of running back. He's the best running back in America, though. Yes, but he is not Todd Gurley of the Rams. No way. That kid, he's not Walter Payton. He's, uh. he's, he's, not, he's not that kind of player. After the break, we'll talk about the world's most dominant athletes and more with Colin Cowherd right after this. in the business and in the world of sports talk he may be the best he's Colin Cowherd of FS1 he does NFL he does a lot of things you know you have a favorite sport grew up loving baseball I think with technology my pace increased so I, I'm, I'm I kind of favor frenetic sports basketball and football NFL pro pro football pro basketball are probably my favorite but you know I, I like anything you know I mean I'll watch anything. I like competition. Baseball, I like them all, but baseball is still my favorite because it's the mind. Well, it's it is. It's cerebral, and uh, we Athletic both. Athletic chess. It's there's a lot of shifts happening. You know what's happening in sports, Larry? That's interesting. So in my lifetime, most legislation from NCAA to baseball to football has tried to create parity. I think I'll ask you a question. I'm going to flip the table. 
Okay, so right now, women's basketball has got a dynasty. College football has its greatest dynasty. LeBron's made seven straight finals. Uh, the NBA has a dynasty. And think about this. NASCAR just had a dynasty. Why are there more dynasties concurrently than we've ever had when leagues are fighting against it? And my belief is, much like in Silicon Valley, sports has become analytically driven and early adapters separate. It's happening in baseball. Cleveland, Cubs, Dodgers, Red Sox, Yankees. Now, the Yankees always had money, but they weren't great in the 70s and 80s. Oh. The teams and the front offices all through sports, college and pro, that adapt, early adapters with analytics, separate quickly. Houston. And this, this Houston thing was six years ago in the making. Cleveland. Yeah, it it's was. not market size anymore, Larry. It's yeah, not yeah. everybody's making. With all these regional deals, the Cincinnati Reds are making money. No, they're not making Dodger money, but they're making money. Baseball's a regional sport, but... It has more total. Well, actually, plays so many games, 162. But I know I used to complain. The NFL is plays once a week. It's gambling. Right. Gambling's a huge component. Boom. It's also really good on TV. Yeah. It's three hours. It's in a box. It's a square field. Yeah. Games have urgency. They all mean something. Uh, you recently unveiled your most dominant athletes list. Yes. Your criteria. Here is who you put as your top five dominant athletes. Last 20 years. Last 20, and I agreed with only one. All right. Okay. You put Floyd Mayweather, Usain Bolt, Michael Phelps, Serena Williams, and Roger Federer. Yes. The only one I agreed with was Federer. And my other four were LeBron James, Mike Trout, Alex Ovechkin. Mike o Trout's never won a playoff game. Alex Ovechkin. That's pretty good. And Tom Brady. Let me, let me fight for Serena Williams here. Now think about this. Serena Williams won the Australia Open while pregnant. <laughs> I, think she, I think she gave birth during the first set and won the second set. <laughs> okay, Serena Williams won a major while pregnant. She's not only the best individual player, she's never lost in a doubles final. She's never really had competition. Even Federer had Djokovic where he struggled. Tiger Woods... Serena Williams has won 15 Grand Slams before the last time Tiger won his last major. Serena Williams is the most underrated athlete of my Make life. A great point, yeah. Maybe the most dominant athlete of her generation. Incre and by the way, you and I grew up with Martina, Steffi Graf, Billie Jean King, Chris Everett. I don't think they're close. I've never seen. Now, the only reason I put Mayweather in, he's 50-0. Hasn't lost since 96 in the Olympics and was knocked down briefly once. Usain Bolt, I give him credit. Just say this out loud. History of the world. He's the fastest human ever. That has to account for something. Yeah, you make a, you're if strong. You're the fastest human. I know when you give your opinions, you're very strong. I'm Colin. convicted. Okay. LeVar Ball. Yeah. You had him on your show. Yes. I hear it went a little wild. He was a little wild. He was, uh, uh, he was not, he was offensive to my female co-host. Yeah. Christine Leahy was on the show and he was stay in your lane and that didn't go well. But you know, it was an interesting moment, Larry, because I didn't jump in because I thought if I jump in, am I disrespecting her? I was raised by a very proper mother. And I thought, if I jump in as he's being rude, and she was firing back, she was holding her own. If I jump in to save her, am I minimizing or marginalizing her? She was punching back. So let her punch. And I got a lot of criticism for it, but in the end, she's a broadcaster and a professional. She'd worked locally, regionally, and nationally. Even now, she's got to deal with NBC. She's all over our network. It was an interesting moment. I didn't like what he did, but I thought she was landing and uh, wasn't being overpowered, and I thought it was tense and captivating TV. Didn't love what he was doing, but in the end, um, I thought it actually, in my opinion, elevated her. Does he help or hurt his sons? Parenting's hard. He got a bunch of scholarship, three boys to UCLA, which is the most applied to university in the world. Hard for me to criticize. Lonzo Ball's a good kid. He's a nice kid. Lakers like him. He's a hard worker, yeah. uh, almost stoic. Mark smart. I mean, his vision's ridiculous. Think the two other boys will play in the NBA? Not to that level.
I think he's got, he's different. You know how it is when you have kids, you have the young one, the middle kid, they all have like a syndrome. You know, the old kid, usually the older kid's more mature, the middle kid feels lost, the young kid's a little rebellious. I, I tend to think Lonzo's going to be kind of the, he's going to be the top player. Would you change the NBA and its playoff structure? Oh, I think that's, oh, we're overreacting. We have LeBron in a dynasty. We're always overreacting in sports. Now everybody wants to get rid of the NBA, or the NCAA. The NCAA is terrible. So let me, let me pose this. So what we don't like is that kids have to go play basketball who are great. They're prodigies, really. If in America, we have 320 million people. On average, the NBA draft, if you take out European players, of which there's about four to five a year, there's about nine to ten guys who can really play. The rest of them wash out. But there's nine or ten domestic kids that get a second, third contract, become rich. Um, beyond you, me, rich, rich, right? So I would call them prodigies. So we're going to blow up the system because for a year, those guys don't become rich. Well, they do nine months later, okay? Never forget what the NCAA provides to the female gymnast, to the African-American tennis player at Tulane, who's not going to have a pro career. They give college opportunities, travel, tutoring. Um, the NCAA works for a majority of people. Does it work for basketball prodigies? No, it doesn't. Does it work for Alabama football players? No. But it works for the Oregon State football player who doesn't, maybe he's a 2-7 no. student. I, I, we tend to be, I wish we had more moderate thinking. Everything is blow everything up. Let's change everything. The best thing it. about you, Colin, is you make people think. A couple of baseball questions before we go to some fan questions. Uh, you make rule changes. What do you make of speeding up the game? Baseball? Yeah. I think, we, I think we're... We're so paralyzed by that. Cincinnati Reds, Boston Red Sox, four hours. Darcy, Pat Zachary, home run, Carlton Fisk waving at Fenway. I've never watched a football game in my life and said, it was 3.50. I, you know, if it was three hours and 48 minutes, it would have made a much better game. Watch the game. I've never gone to a baseball game. Listen, here's the problem with baseball. You know, a lot I of do, baseball is its pace. Yes. Now, it, 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 could you modify the pitching changes? Some of the analytics, it's ridiculous. Everybody's Tony La Russa now. But, I mean, when you go to a game, baseball's without a clock. It, the pacing is okay. Can't tell the wife when you'll be home. Yeah. Uh, Dodgers, you think they could go back to the World Series? Yeah, I think we're getting, I think we're getting a real top-heavy baseball. I think the Dodgers are good. The Giants are all in now financially. Cubs will have a rebound year. Yankees, Red Sox, Indians, and Houston. I think there's about seven really good teams at the top. Then there's a gap. Houston's pretty good. Houston's really good, and they're built to... They've got about three guys they're going to have to pay here eventually. So I think they need to make hay. They did last year while they can. they got a good contract sports cable. Mm -hmm. uh, Bryce Hopp, is he going to make $40 million? Yeah, like him, like his dad. Met his dad at an All-Star game two years ago. Love him. I, I always go to the dad. What's the dad like? <laughs> Sam Darnold's dad. Peyton Manning's dad. Tom Brady's dad. Might, Bryce the, Nash got a good might dad. the Nationals keep him? They got the money. I would. I'll tell you, here's the key. They're the richest stoners in the league. Who's that? The, the learners. It was the twins. You know, it was Polad. Was it Polad for yeah. years? The twins were the richest owners. The learners. Are the richest owners. Uh, individual owners. The Dodgers have a, a Guggenheim group. Right. But the learners have a... I would keep... Now, you can make the argument he's a home run hitter. What's his value in wins? War. But there are players who are uh, foundational players. Mike Trout for the Angels, Bryce Harper. You keep Derek Jeter, Cal Ripken. Harper feels foundational. Like he just could... You could let one of their... Gio Gonzalez, you could let a great pitcher go. You couldn't let him go. I think they'll try to keep him. Yeah, oh, they'll try, yeah. Uh, some social media questions. Drew Butner on the Larry King Now blog. Were you surprised Philly beat New England in the Super Bowl? Yes, very. I was. Nick Foles? He's your state farm agent. Who's Nick Foles? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a shocker. Drew also asks, do you think LeBron will leave Cleveland? Yes, I do. Um, I don't think he loves Dan Gilbert. They don't have any cap space. Coach they, got sick. They can't reboot it again. I think he's out. Uh, Bruce McClellan on the Larry King Now blog. Do you really hate Philly fans? No, I don't. I don't hate any of them. I really don't. Do you play up that, though? No, I'm never, I never, I, I try never to be dishonest. I can be theatrical. Listen, I, I, the Sixers are better than I thought, and the Eagles shocked me in the Super Bowl. Listen, Philadelphia is passionate. I like passionate fans. Well, they are that. They are passionate. You know, that, all sports is, is an emotional connectivity between Teams, fans, and I'm in the middle. 
So the, the more passionate I get, I, I, I always say, I'm looking for drama. I'm rooting for tire fires on the side of a freeway. I'm looking for stuff I can talk about. <laughs> John Crabtree on the Larry King Now blog. Athletes have been more politically outspoken than normal lately. What do you make of the pushback against LeBron James speaking out against Trump? I don't feel a lot of pushback with LeBron. I think the NBA... Well, Laura Ingram made that stupid. Well, yeah, I, I don't. Here, here's what I'll say. You know, pol don't confuse political alignment with politics are good for work. Now... If you go to Thanksgiving dinner or church and everybody's banging on Obama, oh, politics are easy. You know, with, with the Warriors, they're winning all their games, owner, GM, coach, players, it's all anti-Trump. That's easy. What if Steph Curry missed three weeks, they lost nine games, and Zaza Pachulia came out and said, you know, I like Trump. And a guy said, one of the coaches said, I'm pro-NRA. Losing streak. Trump, NRA. Warriors make it work because they never lose, and they're all anti-Trump. Political alignment, by the way, the Seahawks, it was all great until they lost games. Then they gave Michael Bennett and Richard Sherman away. So, yeah, we've all grown up knowing Thanksgiving dinner, church, workspace, be careful about politics. Now, people say, well, racial uh, equality is not political. It shouldn't be. But in our world today, Colin Kaepernick, Kaepernick took a knee for racial inequality. It became political. Larry, in my life, weather was small talk. Weather's now political. If I walked up and said, God, it's hot, people would say, oh, you're a California hippie, you're anti-Trump. No, it's just hot. <laughs> you know, global warming, you can't talk about anything. So even, even the fight for racial equality, which we're all for, that becomes political. And I think it can work if you have a smart player like Malcolm Jenkins, who can smart, a veteran, who is, uh, can smartly navigate it and is willing to listen. He ha he's fighting for the right thing. But not everybody's capable of that. Some, ki some kids aren't ready for the blowback in social media or the media. It's hard to be a leader. And Malcolm Jenkins makes it work. Mm -hmm. He's smart. He's a veteran. And he, wanted to, he, wanted, he wasn't selfish. It was about the cause, not about him. And so it worked. Colin Cowherd, he always makes you think the other way. You know, no Scully with the Dodgers this year. But they got that Joe Davis kid. He's very oh, good. Oh, he's good. Damn right he's good. He's, he's the best young announcer in American television. Agree with you 100%. He is really good. Big thanks to my guest, Colin Cowherd. Be sure to tune in to The Herd and speak for yourself both weekdays on FS1. So always you can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time.